ओम ज्ञान तुमरांदनाशलाकय चक्षुरीमीचंगीगुरव नम नम ओं विष्णु पदा कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नाम नमस्ते सरस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चातारणे तृणादी सुनीचन चरोसहिष्णुना मानीना मनदेन कीर्तनीय सदा हरि हरे नाम हरे नाम हरे नाम कवल कलाओ नास्व नस्व गतिथ्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंदीअद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवासदी गौ भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्ण 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 हे कृष्ण 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 हे कृष्ण 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 रक्षमा कृष्ण 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 पाकिमा राम राघव राम राघव राम राघव रक्षमा कृष्ण केशव कृष्ण केशव कृष्ण केशव पाकिमा राम राघव राम राघव राम राघव रक्षमाम कृष्ण केशव कृष्ण केशव कृष्ण केशव पाकिमा राम राघव राम राघव राम राघव रक्षमाम कृष्ण केशव कृष्ण केशव कृष्ण केशव पाहिमा हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे 
जा विष्णुपाद परमहंस परिवराज कचार्य अस्तोत्र सत्य श्री श्रीमान हिस्ड बाय से श्री भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी शिव प्रभुपाद की जाय अनंत कौति वैष्णव वृंद की जाय नामाचार्य हरिदास ठाकुर की जाय प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्री वासारी गौर भक्त वृंद की जाय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गुप गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंद राधा कुंद गिरी गोवृदान की जाय वृंदावन धाम की जाय नवद्वीप धाम की जाय भक्ति देवी की जाय तुलसी महारानी की जाय यमुना देवी की जाय गंगा देवी की जाय समवेता भक्त वृंद की जाय गौर प्रेम नंदे ऑल ग्लोरीज टू दी असम्बल कृष्ण बुक स्टूडेंट्स ऑल ग्लोरीज टू दी असम्बल कृष्ण बुक स्टूडेंट्स All glories to the Krishna Book students of Cologne and in India and Santiago. Jai Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Bo. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So the scene number 3 is entitled Parikshit's question. Maharaj Parikshit heard Shukadeva Goswami explain the situation of the gopis who assembled with Krishna in the rasa dance. When Parikshit heard that some of the gopis simply by concentrating on Krishna as their paramour they became freed from all contamination of material birth and death he said the gopis did not know that krishna is the supreme personality of godhead for they accepted krishna as a beautiful boy and considered krishna to be their paramour so how was it possible for them to get free from the material condition just by thinking of a paramour prabhupad now comments here one should consider that krishna and the ordinary living beings are qualitatively one both being spiritual in nature the ordinary living beings being part and parcel of krishna are also brahman or spirit but krishna is the supreme spirit para brahman the question is if it is possible for the devotee to get free from the material contaminated stage simply by thinking of krishna then why not others who are also thinking of someone else if one is thinking of a husband or a son or if anyone at all is thinking of another living entity since all living entities are also brahman spiritual then why are they not all freed from the contaminated stage of material nature this is a very intelligent question posed by parikshit because the atheists are always trying to imitate krishna especially in these days of kali yuga there are many rascals who think themselves to be as great as krishna and who cheat people into believing that thinking of them is as good as thinking of lord krishna apprehending the dangerous condition of blind followers of demoniac imitators Parikshit therefore asked this question and fortunately it is recorded in the Sri Mad Bhagavatam just to warn innocent people that thinking of an ordinary man and thinking of Krishna are not the same actually even thinking of the demigods cannot compare with thinking of Krishna it is also warned in the vaishnava tantra that one who puts vishnu narayan or krishna on the same level of the demigods 
is thus called a pashanda or a rascal. So, upon hearing this question of Maharaj Parikshit, Shukadeva Goswami replied, My dear king, your question is already answered even before this incident of the Rasa dance. Because Parikshit Maharaj wanted to clear up the situation, his spiritual master answered him very intelligently. Why are you again asking the same subject matter which has already been explained to you? Why are you so forgetful? The spiritual master is always in the superior position, so he has the right to chastise his disciple in this way. Of course, Shukadeva Goswami knew that Parikshit Maharaj asked the question not for his own understanding, but as a warning to the future innocent people who might think others to be equal to Krishna. Shukadeva Goswami then reminded Parikshit Maharaj about the salvation of Shishupal. Shishupal was always envious of Krishna, and because of his envy, Krishna killed him. Since Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Shishupal gained salvation simply by seeing Krishna. So, if an envious person can get salvation simply by concentrating their mind upon Krishna, <laughs> then what to speak of the gopis who are so dear to Krishna and always thinking of Krishna in love? And there must be some difference between the enemies and the friends. If Krishna's enemies could get freed from material contamination, and become one with the Supreme, then certainly Krishna's dear friends like the gopis must be freed and they are with him. And besides that, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is called Rishi Kesha. Shukadeva Goswami also said that Krishna is Rishi Kesha, the super soul, whereas an ordinary man is a conditioned soul covered by the material body. However, Krishna and Krishna's body are the same because Krishna is Rishi Kesha. Any person making a distinction between Krishna and Krishna's body is fool number one. Krishna is called Rishi Kesha, and he is called Adhoksaja. These two particular words have been used by Parikshit Maharaj in this instance. Rishi Kesha is the super soul, and Adhoksaja is the supreme personality of Godhead, transcendental to the material nature. Just to show favor, to the ordinary living entities, out of his causeless mercy, Krishna appears as he is. Unfortunately, foolish persons mistake Krishna to be an another ordinary person, and thus they become eligible to go to hell. Shukadeva Goswami reconfirmed that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, imperishable, immeasurable, and free from all material contamination. Shukadeva Goswami continued to inform Maharaj Parikshit that Krishna is not an ordinary person. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, full of all spiritual qualities. Krishna thus appears in this material world out of his causeless mercy. And whenever Krishna appears, he appears as he is without change. 
This is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, where Lord Krishna says in the fourth chapter, Ajopi son of Yayatma, Bhutanam Ishwaropi son, Prakriting Swam Adhishtaya, Sambhavami Atma Mayaya. Krishna appears in his spiritual potency, and Krishna does not appear under the control of the material potency. Rather, the material potency is under his control, as is said in Bhagavad Gita. Mayad yakshena prakriti suyate sacharacharam hetunanena kaunteya jagat vipari vartate. That verse says that the material potency is working under Krishna's superintendence. It is also confirmed in the Brahma Sanghita. Shristi Shthiti Pralaya Sadhana Shaktir Eka Chayeva Yasya Bhuvanani Bibarti Durga Ichchana Rupam Api Yasya Cha Cheshtate Sa Govindam Adi Purushang Tamahang Bajami According to Brahma Sanghita, the material potency is known as Durga and is acting just like a shadow which moves according to the movement of the substance. The conclusion is that if one somehow or other becomes attached to Krishna or attracted to Krishna, either because of Krishna's beauty, quality, opulence, fame, strength, renunciation, or knowledge, or even through lust, anger, fear, affection, or friendship, then one's salvation and freedom from material contamination is thus assured. In Bhagavad Gita, 18th chapter, Lord Krishna also states, Na cha tasman manushyeshu kaschin me priya kritamaha bhavita na cha me tasmad anya priya taro bhuvi. Krishna says that one who is engaged in preaching Krishna consciousness is very, very dear to him. After all, the preacher has to face many difficulties in the struggle to preach pure Krishna consciousness. Sometimes the preacher has to suffer bodily injuries and sometimes the preacher has to meet death also. But all of this is taken as a great austerity on behalf of Krishna. Therefore, Krishna said in the Gita that such a preacher is very, very dear to him. So, if Krishna's enemies can expect salvation simply by concentrating their minds upon him, then what to speak of persons who are so dear to Krishna? The conclusion should be that the salvation of those who are engaged in preaching Krishna consciousness in the world is guaranteed in all circumstances. But such preachers never care for salvation because factually, one who is engaged in Krishna consciousness, devotional service, has already achieved salvation. Shukadeva Goswami therefore assured King Parikshit that he should always rest assured that one attracted by Krishna attains liberation from material bondage because Krishna is the transcendental master of all mystic power. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Om Namah Bhagavate Vasudevaya 
Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So this is called Scene 4 Krishna's Word Jugglery When all the gopis assembled as described previously and they met Krishna he began to speak to them welcoming them, them as well as discouraging them by word jugglery. After all, Krishna is the supreme speaker. Krishna is the speaker of Bhagavad Gita. Krishna can speak on the highest elevated subjects of philosophy, politics, economics. Krishna can speak on anything. And Krishna also spoke before the gopis who were so dear to him. Krishna wanted to enchant them by his word jugglery, and thus Krishna began to speak. O oh, ladies of Vrindavan, you are all very fortunate, and you are all very dear to me. I am very pleased that you have come here, and I hope everything is well in Vrindavan. Now, please order me. What can I do for you? What is the purpose of your coming here in this dead of night? Kindly take your seats and let me know what I can do for you. The gopis had come to Krishna in order to enjoy his company, to dance with him, embrace him, and kiss him. So when Krishna began to receive them very officially, showing all kinds of etiquette, the gopis were surprised. It was as if Krishna was treating them as ordinary society women. Therefore the gopis began to smile among themselves and they very eagerly listened to Krishna talking in that way. When Krishna saw that the gopis were smiling, he then said, My dear friends, you must know now that it is the dead of night and the forest is very dangerous. For at this time, all ferocious jungle animals such as tigers, bears, jackals and wolves are prowling throughout the forest. Therefore, it is very dangerous for you, and you cannot select a secure place now. Everywhere you go, you will find that all these animals are loitering just to find their prey. Therefore, I think that you are taking a great risk in coming here in the dead of night. So please, turn back immediately without delay. When Krishna saw that the gopis continued to smile, he further said, I very much appreciate your nice bodily features. Indeed, all of the gopis who assembled there were exquisitely beautiful. But Krishna wanted to impress on the gopis that they were not old enough to take care of themselves. Actually, they required protection. So it was not very wise for them to come in the dead of night to meet him. Krishna also indicated that he was young and that the gopis were young girls. Yes, it does not look very well for young girls and boys to remain together in the dead of night. After hearing this advice, the gopis did not seem very happy. And therefore, Krishna began to stress the point in yet a different way. My dear friends, I can understand that you have left your homes without permission of your guardians. Therefore, I think your mothers, fathers, elderly brothers, or even your sons, and what to speak of your husbands, must be very anxious to find you. 
As long as you are here, they may be searching in different places, and their minds must be very agitated. So do not tarry. Please go back and make them peaceful. Now the gopis appeared to be a little bit disturbed and even angry from the free advice of Krishna. They thus diverted their attention to looking at the beauty of the forest. At that time, the whole forest was illuminated by the bright shining of the moon and the air was blowing very silently over the blooming flowers and the green leaves of the trees were moving in the breeze. Krishna thus took the opportunity of the gopis looking at the forest to further advise them. Hmm, I think you have come out just to see the beautiful Vrindavan forest on this night. But you must now be satisfied, so return to your homes without delay. I understand that you are all very chaste women. So now that you have seen the beautiful atmosphere of this Vrindavan forest, please return home and engage in the faithful service of your respective husbands. Some of you must have babies by this time, although you are very young. You must have left your small babies at home and they must be now crying. So please, immediately go back home and just feed them. I can understand that you have very great affection for me. And out of that transcendental affection, you have come here, hearing my playing upon my flute. Your feelings of love and affection for me are very appropriate because I am the Supreme Personality of Godhead. All living creatures are my parts and parcels, and naturally they are affectionate to me. So this affection for me is very much welcome, and I congratulate you for this. But now you can go back to your homes. And another thing I must explain to you, for a chaste woman, Service to the husband without duplicity is the best religious principle. A woman should be not only faithful and chaste to the husband, but affectionate to the friends of her husband, obedient to the father and mother of the husband, and affectionate to the younger brothers of the husband. And most importantly, the woman must take care of the children. In this way, Krishna explained the duty of a woman. Krishna also stressed the point of serving the husband. Even if the husband is not a very good character, or even if he is not very rich or fortunate, or even if he is old or invalid on account of continued diseases, whatever the husband's condition, a woman should not divorce her husband if she actually desires to be elevated to the higher planetary systems after leaving this body. Besides that, it is considered abominable in society if a woman is unfaithful and goes searching for another man. Such habits will deter a woman from being elevated to the heavenly planets and the results of such habits are very degrading. A married woman should not search for a paramour for this is not sanctioned by the Vedic principles of life. So if you think that you are very much attached to me and want my association, I advise you not to try to personally enjoy me. Better you go home, simply talk about me, think of me, 
And by this process of constantly remembering me and chanting my holy name, you will surely be elevated to the spiritual platform. There is no need to stand near me any longer. Please go back home. The instruction given here by the Supreme Personality of Godhead was not at all sarcastic. Such instructions should be taken very seriously by all honest women. The chastity of women is specifically stressed herein by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, this principle should be followed by any serious woman who wants to be elevated to a higher status of life. Krishna is the center of all affection for all living creatures. When this affection is developed for Krishna, then one surpasses and transcends all Vedic injunctions. This was possible for the gopis because they were able to see Krishna face to face. This is not possible for any woman in the conditioned state. Unfortunately, by imitating the behavior of Krishna with the gopis, sometimes a rascal takes the position of Krishna following the philosophy of monism or oneness and very irresponsibly takes advantage of Rasalila in order to entice many innocent women and mislead them in the name of so-called spiritual realization. As a warning, Lord Krishna has herein hinted that what was possible for the gopis is not possible for ordinary women. Although a woman can actually be elevated by advanced Krishna consciousness, she should not be enticed by an imposter who says that he is Krishna. She should concentrate her devotional activities in chanting and meditating upon Krishna as advised herein. One should not follow the men called Sahajiya, the so-called devotees who take everything very lightly. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So this is scene number five. So when Krishna spoke in such a discouraging way to the gopis, they became very sad, for the gopis thought that their desire to enjoy rasa dance with Krishna would be frustrated. Thus, the gopis became full of anxiety. Out of great sadness, the gopis began to breathe very heavily. Instead of looking at Krishna face to face, the gopis bowed their heads and looked to the ground, and they began to draw various types of curved lines on the ground with their toes. The gopis were shedding heavy tears, and their cosmetic decorations were being washed off from their faces. The water from their eyes mixed with the kumkum on their breast and fell to the ground. The gopis could not say anything to Krishna. They simply stood there silently. By their silence, the gopis expressed that indeed their hearts were grievously wounded. The gopis are not ordinary women. In essence, they are on an equal level with Krishna. The gopis are Krishna's eternal associates, as confirmed in Brahma Sanghita. Ananda Chinmaya Rasa Pratibhavitabhis 
तहीर या एवा निजर रूपताया कलाबी गोलो के एवा निबसति अखिलात्म बूटो गोविंदम आदि पुरुषं तमहं बजामि गोविंदम आदि पुरुषं तमहं बजामि Lord Brahma says that the gopis are expansions of the pleasure potency of Krishna and as his potency the gopis are non different from Krishna Although the gopis were depressed by the words of Krishna they did not like to use harsh words against Krishna Yet the gopis Yet the gopis wanted to rebuke Krishna for his unkind words and therefore they began to speak in faltering voices The gopis did not like to use harsh words against Krishna because Krishna was their dearmost their heart and soul The gopis had only Krishna within their hearts The gopis were completely surrendered and dedicated souls naturally when the gopis heard such unkind words from krishna they tried to reply but in their attempt torrents of tears fell from their eyes finally the gopis managed to speak oh krishna you are very cruel you should not talk like that We are all fully fledged surrendered souls. Please accept us and don't talk in this cruel way. Of course, you are the supreme personality of Godhead and you can do whatever you like, but it is not worthy of your position to treat us in such a cruel way. We have come to you leaving everything behind. just to take shelter of your lotus feet we know that you are completely independent and can do whatever you like but we request you don't reject us for we are your devotees why you should accept us just as lord narayan accepts his devotees there are many devotees of lord narayan who worship lord narayan for salvation and lord narayan awards them salvation similarly how can you reject us gopis when we have no other shelter than your lotus feet oh dear krishna you are the supreme instructor there is no doubt about it your instructions for women to be faithful to their husbands and to be merciful to their children to take care of homely affairs and to be obedient to the elderly members of the family are surely just according to the tenets of shastras but we know also that all these instructions of the shastras may be observed perfectly by keeping oneself under the protection of your lotus feet our husbands friends family members and children are all dear and pleasing to us only because of your presence for you are the super soul of all living creatures without your presence one is worthless when you leave the body the body immediately dies and according to the injunction of the shastra a dead body must immediately be thrown into the river or burned by fire therefore ultimately you are the dearmost personality in this whole universe so by placing our faith and love in your personality there is no chance of our being bereft of husband friends sons or daughters for if a woman accepts you as the supreme husband 
then she will never be bereft of her husband as in the bodily concept of life. If we accept you as our ultimate husband, then there is no question of being separated, divorced, or widowed. You are the eternal husband, eternal son, eternal friend, and eternal master, and one who enters into a relationship with you is eternally happy. Since you are the teacher of all religious principles, your lotus feet have to be worshipped first. Accordingly, the Shastras state, Acharya Upasana. Worship of your lotus feet is the first principle. Besides that, it is stated in Bhagavad Gita, Bhoktaram yagya tapasam sarvaloka maheshwaram suridam sarvabhutanam gyatva maam shantam richati. You are the only enjoyer, you are the only proprietor, and you are the only friend. As such, we have come to you leaving aside all so-called friends, society, and love. And now, you have become our enjoyer. Let us be everlastingly enjoyed by you. Be our proprietor, for that is your natural claim. And be our supreme friend, for you are naturally so. Let us thus embrace you, as the Supreme Beloved. Then the gopis told lotus-eyed Krishna, please do not discourage our long-cherished desires to have you as our husband. Any intelligent man who cares for his own self-interest reposes all loving spirit in you. Persons, who are simply misled by the external energy, who want to be satisfied by false concepts, try to enjoy themselves apart from you. The so-called husband, friend, son, daughter, or father and mother are all simply sources of material misery. No one is made happy in this material world by having a so-called father, mother, husband, son, daughter, and friend. For although the father and mother are expected to protect the child, there are many children who are suffering still for want of food and shelter. And there are many good physicians. <laughs> but when a patient dies, no physician can revive that person. There are so many means of protection but when one is doomed, none of the protective measures can help. And without your protection, the so-called sources of protection simply become sources of continued distress. We therefore appeal to you, dear Krishna, Lord of all lords, please do not kill our long-cherished desires to have you as our supreme husband. Dear Krishna, as women, we are certainly satisfied when our hearts are engaged in the activities of family affairs, but our hearts have already been stolen by you. <laughs> we can no longer engage them in family affairs. And besides that, you are asking us repeatedly to return home. And that is a very appropriate instruction. But unfortunately, we have become stunned here. Now our legs have no power to move a step away from your lotus feet. Therefore, if even at your request we return home, what shall we do there? We have lost all capacity to act without you. 
instead of engaging our hearts in family affairs as women, we have now developed a different type of lust which is continually blazing in our hearts. So now we request you, dear Krishna, to extinguish that fire with the beautiful smile of yours and the transcendental vibration emanating from your lips. But if you do not agree to do us this favor, then we shall certainly be burned in the fire of separation. And in that condition, we shall simply think of you and your beautiful features and give up our bodies immediately. In that way, we think it will be possible for us to reside at your lotus feet in the next life. Dear Krishna, if you say that if we go home, our respective husbands will satisfy our desires, then we can only say that that is no longer possible. You have given us a chance to be enjoyed by you in the forest and have embraced us once in the past. And we accepted that as a great blessing, as did the goddesses of fortune who are enjoyed in the Vaikuntha Lokas by you in your form as Narayan. So since we have tasted this transcendental enjoyment, we are no longer interested in going to anyone but you for our satisfaction. Dear Krishna, the lotus feet of the goddess of fortune are always worshipped by the demigods, although she is always resting upon your chest in the Vaikuntha planets. Lakshmi once underwent great austerity and penance to have some shelter at your lotus feet, which are always covered by tulsi leaves. Your lotus feet are the proper shelter of your servitors, and the goddess of fortune, instead of abiding on your chest, voluntarily comes down and worships your lotus feet. Now, we have placed ourselves under the dust of your feet. Please, do not reject us, for we are fully surrendered souls. Dear Krishna, we know that you are known as Hari, for you destroy all the miseries of all living entities, specifically of those who have left their homes and family attachment and who have completely taken shelter of you. So we have left our homes with the hope that we shall completely devote and dedicate our lives to your service. We are simply begging to be engaged as your servants. We do not wish to ask you to accept us as even your wives. No, simply accept us as your maidservants. Since you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, we have come to satisfy your transcendental desires. We are also after our own satisfaction, for simply by looking at your smiling face, <laughs> we have become very attracted to you. We have come before you, decorated with all ornaments and dress. But until you embrace us, all of our dresses and beautiful features still remain incomplete. You are the Supreme Person. And if you complete our dressing attempt as the Purusha Bhushana, or male ornament, then all our desires and bodily decorations will be complete. Dear Krishna, we have simply been captivated by seeing you with tilak and with earrings and by seeing your beautiful face covered with scattered hair and your extraordinary smile. And not only that, but we are also attracted by your arms, which always give assurance to the surrendered soul. And although we are also attracted by your chest, which is always embraced by the goddess of fortune, 
We do not wish to take Lakshmi's position. No. Again, we shall simply be satisfied by becoming your maidservants. If, however, you accuse us of discouraging chastity, then we can only ask, where is that woman within all these three worlds who is not captivated by your beauty and your rhythmic songs vibrated by your transcendental flute? Within these three worlds, there is no distinction between men and women in relation to you because both men and women belong to the marginal potency or prakriti. No one is actually the enjoyer or the male. Everyone is meant to be enjoyed by you. So there is no woman within these three worlds who cannot but deviate from her path of chastity once she is attracted to you because your beauty is so sublime that not only men and women, but cows, birds, beasts, and even trees, fruits, and flowers, everyone and everything becomes enchanted. What to speak of ourselves? It is, however, definitely decided that as Lord Vishnu is always protecting the demigods from the onslaught of the demons, so you also have invented in Vrindavan just to give the residents protection from all kinds of distress. O oh, dear friend of the distressed, kindly place your hand upon our burning hearts as well as on our heads because we have surrendered unto you as your eternal maidservants. If you think, however, that your lotus-like palms might be burned to ashes if placed upon our burning hearts, let us assure you that your palms will feel pleasure instead of pain, just as the lotus flower although very delicate and soft, enjoys the scorching heat of the sun. To be continued. Now for Naratara's spiritual insurance policy for all my Krishna book students. Namaste Narasinghaya Praklad haklad dayane Hiranya kashipur vakshaha Shila tanka nakalaye Ito nasringa parato nasingo Yato yato yami Tatona Sringa Bahir Nasringo Ridae Nasringho Nasringham Adim Sharanam Prabhaji Nasringham Adim Sharanam Prabhaji Tavakara Kamalavare Nakam Adbuta sringam Dalita Hiranya Kashipu Tanu bringam Keshavadrita Narahadi Rupa Jaya Jagadisha Hare Jaya Jagadisha Hare Jaya Jagadisha Hare Keshavadrita Narahari Rupa Jaya Jagadisha Hare Jaya Jagadisha Hare Jaya Jagadisha Hare 
जय जगदीश जय जगदीश जय जगदीश हरे हरे जय जगदीश हरे ओम ठ सत्य